about how to deal with spider mites. Something that we all dread is a pest on our plants, but if we don't know how to deal with it, then we'll never be able to fix the problem. So I wanted to walk you through the process that I go through. It's best to just learn how to do it um, now before your collection gets too big, and then you'll um, have a lot more plants that would possibly get infested with spider mites or um, other kind of plant pests that we're not gonna cover right now. But behind me I have my burgundy ficus. My husband um, brought it home from his coffee shop. I gave him a bunch of really beautiful plants um, because he wanted a lot of greenery. I haven't had time to go in and, and take care of the plants properly. So he brought this one home and although when I gave it to him there were like this, like giant leaves like this all over, even on the bottom of this plant, it was full and lush and awesome. He brought it home to me and looked like this. So I watered it, I took care of it for a little while, and I saw that it was um, it was doing much better. I inspected it and there were no pests. So I brought it in here right next to one of my favorite fiddle leaf fig plants that we have. And as the time has gone on, I've noticed that this actually has some webbing on it, which means that there are spider mites on this plant. So instead of freaking out, I'm just gonna walk you guys through the steps that I go through whenever I find out that I have um, that I have an infestation. Um, and it's really simple. I don't know why more people don't talk about this simple. This is the simplest way that I, can, that I know to do it. And so you just go and grab your favorite matches. And I prefer the ones that are, um, that have the stick, the hard stem. And you'll just go ahead and light your match like, the, like this, of course. And um, you actually can just just burn your plant because once you have spider mites, that's it. There's no more hope. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna burn my plant. But sometimes it's like sometimes it's so frustrating that you have a pest that you just like want to throw your plant away, get rid of it. Who cares? Um, but you don't have to be that freaked out about a pest. It's gonna happen if you have a plant or two plants or three plants. Um, it just happens. And so I don't know where this plant got um, the infestation from, but I know that it has it and I just need to deal with it now. So with this specific plant, it has seen better days. And instead of, um, of treating this entire plant, I'm actually just gonna cut it and propagate it so that I can have, um, I can have a bunch of these plants and then I don't have to treat the soil. So with spider mites, you'll see webbing between the, um, between the leaf and the stem, or if your stem, if your leaf has like a heart leaf shape, then a lot of times right here is where I'll see the first web on a plant, is right in between on this heart, or again, right, like, right in these, where this, this leaf meets the stem, so right here. And I'll show you closer pictures of what this, these look like, because the webbing is different than a normal spider's webbing. It's very, very, very fine. And a lot of times if you don't use a flashlight to look at your plants, you're not gonna see it. So you can grab a flashlight and shine it behind your plant stems to see if you see any webbing. And if you do, then that's a, a, a surefire way to tell if you have um, spider mites. And um, you can do several different things. Um, I like to wash it off with water first. I found that if I rinse out all the webs, rinse off all the webs with water, and then I treat it with neem, um, I'll show you the mixture that I use and the, the products that I use for the neem, so the neem pesticide. Um, I find that I no longer have any spider mites on that particular plant. So the first thing that I wanted to do was to address this right away because it's it's close to my fiddly fig, but it's not touching, and so I haven't seen any spider mites on this, but I will still spray my fiddle leaf fig with, um, with neem oil and wipe each leaf on the top and the bottom just to make sure that there isn't um, any spider that has somehow traveled onto that plant. I'm also going to make sure that I clean off this stool that I have this propped on, and then I'm gonna be vacuuming the floor because pests have a way from getting from one plant to the other, and if you can prevent that transfer from one plant to the other, you're gonna have a much smaller infestation, and it's gonna take a lot less time of, less of your time to, to clean it up. Um, and that's the ultimate goal, is you don't wanna waste all your time taking care of pests, you wanna just enjoy your plants. Um, and so that's what, what I'm gonna do. So instead of treating this whole plant, 
I'm actually gonna I'm gonna propagate these uh, these stems because sometimes the spider mites will lay their eggs they lay eggs in the soil so the top two inches of soil can have spider mite eggs in it and because this plant has needed some rehab anyways I'm just gonna start it over and then I'll have a bunch of new plants so I'll show you what I'm gonna do um, and if you don't want to do this process you can simply bring this whole plant into your shower and spray it off with a, a really um, a hard mist so that it would knock off all of the spider webs. The goal is to knock off all spider webs because if there are no webbing, if there's no webbing, then there's no way for the spider mites to continue staying on your plant. If you see webbing still, then you still have spider mites. So get rid of the webs, get rid of the spider mites. Um, so you can take your whole plant into the shower and rinse off every leaf top and bottom. And, um, and that's what some people do. I just don't, don't want to treat this whole plant. I'm just going to get rid of this soil after, um, after I propagate these and it'll be a little bit less labor intensive for me, um, than dragging this whole thing around. So I am always super crazy about pests cause I just don't want them to, um, I don't want them to travel and get on any other plant. And so um, I have a, a bag ready here where I'm gonna put my cuttings. And I also, um, I just make sure that I don't touch this plant and then touch any other plant afterwards. I need to make sure that I only touch this plant. These will be sterilized after I cut. Um, and these have been sterilized already so that these are a nice fresh cut, uh, clean pair of shears. So I'm gonna go down and just cut some of these off. And I'm very gentle that I don't shake the leaves a bunch because I don't want these spider mites to be flying all over um, and getting onto other other leaves, other plants. So I'm going to cut all of these down. Like this guy isn't even very, it's really a, a kind of sad plant. And with this, um, you're going to see some, some sap on the ficus. And it's just, uh, it's just going to come out there and it's fine. Man, this was such a pretty plant when I gave it to him. I didn't want it to go to their shop. I just wanted to keep it home. And now I kind of wish that I did that. <laughs> but you live and learn. And then I get to talk about spider mites with you guys. So that's something fun, I guess. Um, but you don't want to get that sap on your skin. Some people find that it's really irritating. I don't really have an irritation towards it, um, but some people do find that it, 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 is, um, it is irritating to their skin. So, yeah, every single one of these has spider mites on it. So this is a bad enough infestation that I'm just trying to, trying to get it done. Here, so let me see if I can show you the webbing. This light will come through. There you go. Can you see that? that you could see it right, right up there, right here. See how, like you can't, you can't even see it. You can't even really see it until you have the right lighting. So you really have to, um, have to be detailed when you look for spider mites because you're not going to see it unless you're really looking for it. Man, this plant was so pretty, like so pretty. So sad, but this is how you get more plants. So I guess this was a forced propagation. I'm gonna take every last one of these because why not? Okay, so now I have my bag full of, of uh, the stems and the leaves that are ready to be propagated. And I will pause here and I'll walk them over so you guys can see how I'm going to wash these off. There's the rest of my plant. Oh. But I have all of these beautiful um, prop leaves that are ready to be propagated, stems that are ready to be propagated. Okay, so let's go and wash these things off. 
Friends, today we're gonna talk about something not just, ugh. Friends, today we're gonna be talking about how to get rid of spider mites on your plants. This is a perfect example. Okay, so I brought everything into the bathroom so that we're ready to, I hope it's not too echoey in here, but uh, so that we're ready to rinse everything off. Pull my hair back because I don't want to get my hair with any spider mites on it and then bring it to another plant. That would be awful. So what I've done is I've um, just put these in my sink. I'm actually gonna... I put these in my sink and I have a good stream of water flowing out that's strong enough to knock off any spider mites. So I'm going to take every single one of these leaves and as you can see, there's webbing in between all of these. So I'm going to make sure that I get in every single nook and cranny of each of these, um, each of these stems, including the stems, because the, the spider mites can also live on these stems. Um, so you want to rinse off the top and bottom of each leaf, and I will also rub each of them down just to make sure that there's no webbing that is stuck on there that I didn't see. And I'm gonna do this with each of my plants, each of these, um, each of these stems. Get in between each of these nooks and crannies. Get every single thing wiped down. And I don't have it on super cold water. It's not super warm either. Um, I don't want to shock the plant too much, but I just need to have the power of the water so that the so that it'll rinse off all of these mites. I've never had a bad infestation like this before. I kind of let this one go to see what it would look like. Um, and I knew that it wouldn't cause too much more damage because it was already a, a plant that had kind of had some stress. So I just wanted to let it um, to let, let it go and see if what I could, um, I just wanted to let it go and see if I could show you some more webbing on here. But it got to a point where I didn't want to let it go anymore. It's, it's just not worth it for you to get an infestation on other plants because it's not fun to treat all your plants. And I can't cut all of my plants up like this. This one just really needed to be propagated anyways. So it was a good opportunity for me to, um, to show you how to propagate these as well as get rid of all the spider mites. So I'm going to continue and do this with the rest of the plants. And then after I've wiped off all of the leaves on each plant, I'll show you what the next step is with neem oil. And I'll show you how I mixed up this solution as well. Be back in a sec. These are all wiped off leaves, top and bottom. And usually with spider mites, you'll see um, little tiny speck of um, like little tiny dots and you can't really see them super well on this plant. Um, I guess you can see those little specks. Um, but that's spider mite damage. Isn't it crazy how much damage? Uh, see, look, do you see that little spider mite? I even washed off the top and the bottom of each leaf and there's still a spider mite. These things are resilient. I can't believe that, actually. I'm pretty surprised that it withstood what I did. So I'm gonna wash this one off again. Maybe I'll do another quick rinse on all of them. Alrighty. Okay, and just for size reference, 
this is my finger next to that spider mite. So this is why they're so easy to miss because it is so tiny. And then you think about those have eggs and think about how small those might be. So, yeah. There he is, resilient little bugger. Wondering where all his friends have gone, I think. I've washed off all of these again. So for the second time, I've rinsed off all of these plant leaves and all of their stems. And I made sure to get the bottoms, um, every one of these um, bottoms and I made sure to get all the bottoms and all of the tops completely washed off, touching every part with my hand to just make sure that I got off every um, spider mite. And I have not seen any other ones on these plants, so I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, I did just make sure I wiped down everything, including in these stems, right in here, in between these little nooks and crannies, and all on the backs of these leaves. Uh, all of these little grooves is another spot for a spider mite to live and and make uh, make and, and lay eggs and everywhere on top so including all these grooves all of these lines here and um, you want to make sure that you when you're checking for spider mites you especially check on the bottom uh, this is where they'll start to uh, to live on your plant they'll start on the bottoms and then if the infestation gets worse, they'll be on the top and they'll be in the stems and everywhere. So I wiped all of these off. And now my next step is to spray them with an insecticide. And what I like to use is a mixture of warm water, neem soap, and uh, neem oil, and I use Blue Dawn because it's what we use for our dishes and I haven't seen it cause any ill effects on my plants. So I'll show you uh, exactly how I mix this up. Um, I just fill the spray bottle up to about here with water first, and then I put in some neem oil. I don't usually measure it out, I just eyeball it at this point, but I do make sure that I warm up my neem oil underneath water. Um, so the just like with coconut oil, when it's hard, it gets, when it's cold, it gets hard. Um, and neem oil is the same way, so you wanna make sure that you are um, are getting that neem oil bottle warm so that it'll flow out like a liquid instead of come out like in clumps. So after I put in some neem oil, I'll put in um, a, a few, a little bit of, of dish soap. And after that, when it's all in, I'll shake it up really well and I'll leave it sit for about 30 seconds. And if I see that this solution starts to separate with the water on the bottom and the neem oil on top, I know that I need to add some more soap because it's not making them conjoin it's it's allowing them to be separated like oil and water so the dish soap will just make the water and the oil stick together and that way every spray that i spray out will have neem oil and water and then the soap is another agent to help kill the spider mites so um, some people just use soap and water um, some people use alcohol and water i'll do alcohol uh, rubbing alcohol um, if this solution does not work, but I haven't had to do that very often. I've only had one time that I had to use alcohol in order to get rid of um, an insect, and I prefer to just use the neem oil when possible because it seems less, har less harsh on the plant. So because this is not separating, I know this is a good solution of water to soap to oil. So um, now that I have this all done, I'm ready to go. I'm going to just spray the top and bottom of each of these plants and all along the stems. So I have my towel laid out here uh, because I don't want to get oil everywhere. I don't want to get stuff sprayed everywhere, but I'll just put it on here until it is running off, until I run off on the top and bottom and stem of each of these leaves. And what this is going to do is any pest that I have not somehow gotten to, because um, as you saw before, I didn't even see that one spider mite until I just gave it a second look on my, on my plant. So they're so small that it could happen that I even, with rinsing these twice, have missed a, another um, spider mite or egg. And so what this is going to do is whatever is left on here is going to kill and suffocate all of those leftover spider eggs. 
And I'm gonna do this with all of these plants and then I'm actually gonna leave these sit here and dry uh, for probably three or four hours. And then after they're all dry, at that point I will get them into a propagation station. I'll just put some in a, a vase of water and then I will wait for them to root. But what I'm not gonna do is put them in my other area of propagation. I'm gonna have them have their own section, um, their own place. So I'm not gonna put them on a shelf with other plants, which is gonna be hard to find because I have plants everywhere. But I will put them in their own, on their own shelf uh, that's lit with okay lighting. I don't really think that the lighting matters as much to cuttings as the water. So I'll just make sure that I uh, have them in water and that I change the water out. I try to every week, but sometimes it's two weeks, every three weeks, just so long as there's water touching it, these stems. That's the main point, because if they dry out, then there's no way that they're going to produce roots. So after I'm done spraying this, I will get uh, let them dry, and then I will get them set up in some water in a, in a jar, and I'll show you what I do here, do after. I just want to get this all set. And I actually did pull off some of the catafil uh, that are, they're the she's that the, that these leaves come out of. So instead of carrying and washing every single aspect, I just pulled, pulled these off so there's no space for any, uh, any spider mite to be hiding. So these plants, I am almost certain that there is no spider mite on here, but who knows? Who knows? Those things are little boogers. They're so tiny um, that even when you do your best, you sometimes can miss it. And so I'm just gonna let these dry and I will check on these in a couple of hours. And once they're dry, I will put them each in their own little vase of water and we'll have like 50 new plants. Thanks spider mites for giving me so many new plant babies. Um, so that's it, I will come back and just uh, once these are all dried up and I'll show you what uh, the next step is. So you can see what the final look is of all of these spider mites, spider mite free plants. Okay, bye. So I told you that I would put this outside and I cut this, once, once I cut these up, I put this right outside and it's freezing out here. So this plant is no longer gonna be alive, but all the spider mites are gone and now I just need to clear out this soil and these roots and I'll have a pot again after I bleach it and scrub it all out. So that'll be great, because I love this pot. And here's my very favorite propagation station. It has so many different vessels that I can hold each of these cuttings in one place and not have to worry about any potential spider mite breakouts in any other area of my house. So I'll keep an eye on these cuttings and make sure that we don't have any more webbing or see any spider mites on these plants. And if I do happen to see one, I will go ahead and repeat the process that I just showed you wiping them off and doing neem oil. If you guys have any other questions, please feel free to comment below and ask. Otherwise, subscribe and like, and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks so much. Bye.